Have you ever wondered how scientists understand things they cannot see, like atoms or even the beginning of the universe? How do they study things that are too small, too big, or too far away? Let's explore the answer through scientific models. I'm Dylan Mason. This is Surbass of Surbass TV, and I will be your guide in exploring the world of science. Are you ready to learn? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and comment hashtag Amazing. Let's go! Imagine trying to study something that's invisible to the eye, or something that's too huge to touch, like the whole planet. Tricky, right? That's why scientists use scientific models. They are like science secret tools. Scientific models are representations of ideas, processes, systems, or objects. They can be drawings, physical replicas, computer simulations, or even mathematical equations. Scientific models help us represent, explain, or predict something about the natural world. Scientists use models to test ideas and explore phenomena we cannot easily observe. But why do you think that's important? Right, because not everything can be observed directly. Models help us imagine the unseen. They help scientists explain things that are hard to see, understand, or imagine. It is like when you use a map to understand where a place is. It is not the place itself, but it helps you understand it better. There are different types of scientific models. These include physical models, conceptual models, mathematical models, and computer models. First up, physical models. These are real, tangible objects. You can touch them, see them, and even move them around. They help us understand what something looks like or how it works, even if we cannot access the real thing. Here are some examples. A globe is a small version of the Earth that help us see continents, oceans, and even lines of latitude and longitude. A skeleton model helps to learn about the human body without having to see a real one. It shows the shape, parts, and structure of our bones. And a DNA model, that spiral-shaped ladder you often see in books and classrooms. It shows the structure of DNA even if we cannot see it with our eyes. Physical models are three-dimensional objects we can touch. They can be life-size or mini versions. Now, let's think deeper. Imagine you are explaining the states of matter, the solid, liquid, or gas, but you cannot see molecules. How would you explain it? That's where conceptual models comes in. Conceptual models are ideas or mental pictures that help us understand complex systems. We do not need to build anything, we just use our brains and sometimes diagrams to explain relationships. Hence, they are also called mental models. Instead of showing how something looks physically, like a globe or a three-dimensional model, a conceptual model shows how ideas or processes work. The particle model of matter is an example of a conceptual model. It uses round particles to represent the composition of matter to explain their observable properties. Conceptual models also include diagrams, flowcharts, and even mind maps anything that helps explain ideas. Diagrams are simple drawings that explain how something works. For example, a water cycle diagram showing evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Mind maps are webs of ideas connected to one main topic. For example, a mind map with photosynthesis in the middle and branches like sunlight, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. Flow charts are step-by-step -step guides that show a process. For example, here is a flow chart showing the steps of the scientific method. Next up, we have mathematical models. These are models made of numbers, letters, symbols, and equations. They help describe patterns, 
relationships, and even predict what might happen next. Mathematical models use numbers and equations to show patterns, relationships, or how things behave. These models are made from what scientists observe, measure, and understand through theories. A good example is Newton's second law of motion, written as force equals mass times acceleration, which explains how force, mass, and acceleration are connected. Another example is a temperature conversion formula written as degrees Celsius equals the quantity of degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 multiplied by 5 ninths, which help convert Fahrenheit to Celsius in weather and laboratory data. The speed formula written as speed equals distance divided by time show how distance and time are related to describe how fast an object is moving. Math may seem scary at times, but it is actually one of science's most accurate languages. It can even predict the future like weather forecasts or population growth. Last but not least, computer models. These use computer programs to simulate real-world systems. They are especially useful when things are too complex, too big, or too dangerous to study directly. Here are three examples. Weather simulation models, these predict typhoons, and help us prepare for natural disaster. Atomic simulations are computer animations that show how atoms bond in chemistry. Space simulations, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, uses this to study how spacecraft will behave in space before they are even launched. Thanks to computer models, we can explore what-if scenarios like how pollution affects climate or how diseases might spread. Now you might be wondering, how do we know if a model is good? Models are tested over and over. If they help explain or predict something accurately, they are accepted. These widely supported models are called consensus models. A great example is the Big Bang Theory, a model explaining how the universe began. Scientific models may not be the real thing, but they help us get closer to understanding the real world. So next time you see a diagram, a formula, or a globe, remember, you are looking at science's way of making the invisible visible. Remember, science is not just in the lab. It is in the world around us waiting to be explored. This is Sir Bass of Sir Bass TV saying, keep asking, keep exploring, and stay ag-amazing. See you in the next lesson.